Check out what we have in the studio here today. The Aperture 300D Mark II. This thing is a beast and it's crazy bright. Maybe a little bit too bright, but here's the question. How much light do you really need? Do you need something this crazy? Cause you could get something like this for 20 bucks and that light up there is the Aperture 120D, the original one. And I think it's discontinued, but it's 545 bucks. And this thing is close to 1100 bucks. Now, some of you may be like, holy f $1,100 for a video light, but in reality, it's actually a pretty good value when you compare it to other lights with this amount of output. To be super technical, it's 45,000 lux at one meter, but maybe you've worked with HMIs before, it's about a 575 watt HMI equivalent. In plain English, it's just super bright. Most of us probably grew up with standard light bulbs where it's like a 100 watt light bulb was pretty bright. And if you want it really bright, then 200 watts or you could do like a 60 watt light bulb. But with technology evolving, watts is no longer a good way to measure the amount of light. It really just means how much power it's drawing or how expensive your electric bill is gonna be this month. Now wattage is definitely still a good thing to know so you don't overload your household circuit. Most households generally have a 20 amp circuit so that's about 2400 watts you could run through it before the flip gets switched. But generally we try to keep it under 2000 watts which is a lot easier now because LEDs are super efficient, but back then it used to be, you know, three simple lights and you could blow it. Now, even though this is crazy powerful, I clocked it at about 329 watts on full power. So what we really need to look at is the photometrics and the two most common ways to measure is candela per square foot or lux. I mean, it's easy to convert between the two, but I think lux is probably a bit more common. It's more on the metric system opposed to square footage. So let's go with lux. And that is going to be the measurement of how much light actually actually hits me in the face. Ah! Now, luckily, this is just an LED and not a tungsten or else my face would have literally just melted off right there. So how much lux do you need to light something? Well, just to give you an example, 200 lux is the minimum for a dining room at a restaurant. So you can be pretty dim in there. 500 lux is about a typical office space or a retail store. Generally for video lighting, we're aiming for about a thousand lux. And this is a very general rule of thumb. Obviously, it's going to change completely depending on your camera, your ISO settings and your aperture. But a thousand lux is a general good baseline to try to keep in mind. Now, 10,000 lux is generally around the threshold for your eyes to tell your body to wake up. So it's good to go out in the morning and look at the sun a little bit, not straight into the sun, but generally like in, in look at bright things and your body will naturally want to wake up. Being in the shade during a sunny day is right around 20,000 lux. And if you're in direct sunlight, you go up to 100,000 or 120. 20,000 lux, so super bright in direct sunlight. But the thing that makes these lights tricky to read is that every little thing you do to it, it's going to significantly change your lux readout. So for example, assuming this light is one meter away from that backdrop, this is about 11,000 lux, which is bright. You can't even tell it's all blown out. But 11,000 right now, if I throw on this reflector, we're looking at 45,000 lux because all the light is focused forward a little little bit more. So now that's about 45,000 lux right there too bright for this. So every time you do anything with it from throwing a gel in front of it to a diffusion or even just changing the focus of a Fresnel, it's going to completely change. But distance is probably going to be the biggest factor in all this because of something called the inverse square law. And the inverse square law basically means the closer you get to the light, the more exponentially brighter it's going to get. So let's say I start all the way back here. It's hitting me. And as I get closer, it gets slightly, slightly brighter, gets slightly brighter. And then just the last bit, it goes boom, and it gets really bright. And this inverse square law also applies to sound. So let's say you have headphones, right? You have them in and when they're right up against your ear, it's like, oh, this sounds really good. But you just pull it away just an inch away from your ear. All of a sudden it sounds quiet and then it slowly fades away the further you bring it out. And this is why we have speakers. It's kind of like when you're at a concert, right? If you ever get up front, you stand right next to a speaker, you're just like, yeah. And then like blood comes out of your ears. That's why a lot of places have huge speakers set up really high. So they can blast it. And by the time it hits the audience, it's at a nice low even spread. So check this out. I have this light right here and it's right up in my face. So I'm very early in that curve. So if the curve's going like this, I'm right here, a lot of light hitting me. And by the time it evens out is when it hits that background. So that's why I'm so much
much brighter than that background. Now, if I want it to be a little bit more even, I'm gonna push this back and now it is further back. And since it is further back, I am going to have to raise the intensity to bring that light exposure back up on me. But with that distance, by the time the light hits me, it's kind of dropped to about this part of the curve. And then the background is just a little bit darker than I am. So the level differences are much closer and tighter. So if you are trying to control a little bit more of that shadow roll off, then this is one way to do it. But I personally like that contrasty look. So let me bring it back in. So now that it's so much closer, you could see that roll off happens much quicker. Yeah, I'll just flick these on for the background and there we go. So all these factors play into how bright your light is gonna be. One thing that Aerie does that I really love is they have this little app or web tool that you can use to really calculate exactly how bright each light is gonna be depending on how you have it modified or set. So that kind of tool is really nice, especially if you're trying to plan ahead for a shoot. But most companies will at least give you a photometric readout of a few different distances at a few different light levels. So with all that being said, in a studio space like this, I'm actually on a fast lens. I'm at a f1.6 with my ISO on 160. So that's a really fast lens. I don't need that much light in here. And I also have the ability to bring these lights in very close. So these lights are plenty for this studio. I actually have this main key light on at only like 50% right now. So the 300D Mark II, tons of power. Uh, when do you need that much power? Let's uh, take it out for a second. Oh, oh hello. Carrie, what you doing up there? What you filming? I'm filming a video. Hold on, stay right there. Do you guys see how much power that is? I'm not tall enough for this. And look at this shot of Carrie here where it looks fine, but she's just in the shade. And if I wanted to add any sort of contrast, I would need to add quite a bit of light because there's already so much light pre-existing. I need something stronger than what's already out here. So here's with no light and I'm gonna go turn it on. Look how much more alive everything looks. It almost looks like the sun. I mean, especially if I were to just diffuse it a little bit more, it'd look pretty good and much more lively than it used to. I'm gonna turn it off again. It feels like the sun. <laughs> and I've had shoots where we were trying to make it look like we were having a barbecue. The problem is while we were turning around, we fell a little bit behind schedule and the sun set while we were doing our turnaround. So half the shots were while the sun was coming in and the other half of the shots were after the sun had set. So we ended up having to set up two Aerie M18s, which are huge lights to make it literally look like the sun. Not saying this is as powerful as the Aerie M18s, but those are the types of situation where you might be like, oh, I need this shot to look like the sun is still coming in. The more power you have capable from a light, the more you can swing these kinds of bigger setups. I'm gonna try throwing this light dome on here because it is a little bit harsh. It is gonna cut down the amount of light that does get projected forward, but I am kind of curious to see how it'll look. One thing I did notice about this light is it doesn't come on instantly, which is nice. See, so when I turn it on, it doesn't come on instantly. It kind of turns on lower and then brightens up, which is really nice. I mean, one thing you're supposed to do on set is before you turn on a bright light, you're supposed to say striking. And that's just giving people a heads up that like if you're staring into a light fixture, close your eyes for a second or look away. But yeah, look at that. Even going through that diffusion, it's looking pretty good. That's a lot of light on there. I mean, this is awesome. It's not like I'm even wide open. There's still quite a bit of pre-existing light. I'm at a F5.6 ISO 400. And it's pretty good. Look at that. This is what it looks like if I turn it off. See that you guys, with this lighting, PETA just looks like she's depressed. But with the Aperture 300D, woo! So this whole thing is new and it's awesome because one, it doesn't have a fan, so it's completely quiet. And also it can clamp onto this stand right here opposed to having to find a spot to try to dangle it off. Oh, I love that. And this came with the light itself. Now I do have one complaint, which is at least with this version is these V mounts, I can't get them to stay in. It doesn't fully click in. Even if I press down really hard and I've been trying to get it to seat perfectly for a while and it does seat enough to turn on the light obviously, but at any point I could just pull it out without pressing this button. Now this is a pre-release version, so I will check in with Aperture to see if they are gonna fix it for the consumer version, but this specific one, the red batteries at least, will not fully click in. Here's a Switronics V-mount. Let's try this guy. Yeah, this one too. 
it kind of like half way seats so it's nice but I would prefer it to not just come out with just some pressure I would rather have it come out only if I push that release button because I've had that happen before I was shooting out of the side of my Jeep with the Aerie Alexa once and then I had a V mount battery attached to an adapter to a gold mount battery onto the Aerie Alexa and I didn't realize that adapter didn't perfectly seat down the batteries and at some point must have nudged something or bumped something it just bumped off and flew out and I literally saw the battery fall down and just explode on the street it didn't actually explode into flames but I saw it bust up into like 10 different pieces all right so now we're really losing the light I'm all the way at an f1.4 at ISO 3200 so definitely really dark here let's say we have a whole space like let's say there's gonna be 30 people here and we want to get some wide shots of everybody here even if we were to set that softbox on the light it's still gonna look really sourcey so a trick I've used a couple times is setting up a ultra bounce somewhere kind of up high and that would be like a big thing that's like 8 by 8 feet or 12 by 12 feet and set it way up there I don't have the resources to do that because usually that's the type of thing that you have your gaffer and grip and electric team set up but let's do a little miniature version for you guys once you have that set up you just want to kick as much light into that bounce as possible that would throw a nice even natural looking light on top of everybody opposed to just like splotches of lighting sometimes you want splotches of lighting if you do it right that could look cool but a lot of times you just want that ambience and even when you just need a little bit of ambient light this intense light gets spread apart so thin and so far that this intense light does become something nice and soft and gentle over this whole yard overall I'm a huge fan of this aperture 300d mark II. definitely the type of product I would expect out of aperture I mean it's no secret I'm a huge fan of their lights and I love that they create these really great products that are for indie filmmakers like us but give us a lot of power and performance out of them and they have all these effects in here like this is paparazzi right here <laughs> oh, thank you thank you yes I'm the best and I do also love that I can control all three of my aperture lights with just this one remote so that's also useful and they also did come out with an app to control that 300d they also made this lantern literally only takes like two seconds to set up yeah look at that that's pretty cool especially if you're trying to light up a space or maybe if you have like a table of people and you want to put something in the middle and light everybody by the way this video wasn't sponsored by aperture or anything like that like if i thought their light sucked i'm a lot to say so that's actually kind of nice how it creates a little bit of this backlight right there that's kind of cool my last video was all about the sony a6400 and how i think it's an awesome camera for under a thousand bucks top comment was from kanabi or kanabe 12 potato jet says yes i recommend the sony a6400 canon cancel all sponsorships with gene right now <laughs> oh man that ship has sailed gene i'm waiting on your thoughts and review of the fuji xt3 and xt30 i have a feeling you'll be blown away fine i'll order it i was trying so hard to get through this month without spending any more money timothy says this guy wants init stabilization just strap it to a flower pot like the rest of us if you get that reference then thank you for being an og subscriber <laughs> waiting for the zhu and crane m2 gimbal review okay first of all i'm my own independent person okay you guys can stop telling me what to do i'll make a review on whatever i want but okay yeah it's coming hats off to the only guy that correctly pronounces zhu and not that you ever read these comments what why does everyone think i don't read these com i'm reading comments in i read comments in every video